We respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which St. Vincent's Hospital is built, the Widjibal Bible people of the Bundjalung Nation, who have walked and cared for this land for thousands of years, and their descendants who still maintain these spiritual and cultural connections. This Mass comes to you from the Chapel of St. Vincent's Hospital. Today's readers represent the Friends of St. Vincent's and the Pastoral Care Department of St. Vincent's Hospital. Our COVID safe liturgy complies with instructions from the Bishop of Lismore and New South Wales Government Directives. All our music is in the public domain used under one license or our original works of the Diocese of Lismore. If you have a prayer intention, please visit our Facebook page or contact us at lismorediocese.org. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today is a very special Sunday all over the world. Last Sunday, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, began the process of the Synod. And in every diocese this Sunday, every bishop will be saying the Mass to open the Synod of the Church. It's a Synod of Bishops, which will be meeting in 2023 and there's a process of involving the whole church, all the people of God. And we in the Lismore Diocese begin with this Mass as we ask God to be with us, to send the Holy Spirit to guide us in the, the thinking and the deliberations that the church will have us be part of. We're grateful to be part of that. Please include it in your prayers. Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, show us your mercy and love and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the, with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on the authority to govern, that your people may be led to know the truth more fully and to grow in holiness according to your will. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping those commandments and laws of his that are written in the book of this law and you shall return to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. For this law that I enjoin on you today is not beyond your strength or beyond your reach. 
It is not in heaven so that you need to wonder. Who will go up to heaven for us and bring it down to us so that we may hear it and keep it? Nor is it beyond the seas so that you need to wonder who will cross the seas for us and bring it back to us so that we may hear it and keep it? No, the wonder is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for your observance. The word of the law. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade it all, or the Spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your convictions and united in your love, with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no deceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. Always consider the other person to be better than yourself so that nobody thinks of his own interests first but everybody thinks of the other people's interests instead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. See See how how good good it is, how how pleasant pleasant that all live live together together in unity. unity. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where. And from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So he stepped ashore. He saw a large crowd and took pity on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some at length. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the moment, um, I'm having plans drawn up to get some cupboards put into my kitchen because my kitchen doesn't really have proper cupboards or things like that. It was more a tea room. And so the people that care for me have enjoined me to to get some things built so that I I can put things in places. And so my kitchen will now become eventually a more functional place. When I arrived there, there was empty spaces where there should have been things and they're going to be prepared. The architecture and the design of interior places varies from one spot to another. A kitchen's a certain kind of place. I suppose a lounge room is another kind of place. But I I started thinking of spaces for the first time when I went to Europe. 
because I remember going into great cathedrals and being overwhelmed by what I saw and felt. And as I sat there, if you could sit there, because some places you can't, you have to stand, but in the English cathedrals, there's often a place to sit. And I'd sit there and I'd be looking around and thinking, why is this having an impact upon me? The way other buildings don't, the way kitchens don't impact upon you, the way bedrooms and lounge rooms and bathrooms don't have an impact. I sat there looking, thinking, what, why is this place so beautiful? And it suddenly occurred to me, because it's empty. There's nothing there. A big building full of nothing. High ceilings, long naves. And as you sit there, you're overwhelmed by the beauty. There are a few things to make a beauty, but the empty space. When you look at beautiful buildings, what struck me when I went to Europe for the first time compared to what we've got in our houses and other places is great buildings are full of emptiness. And in a peculiar way, if they didn't have that emptiness, they wouldn't be beautiful. In today's gospel, we have a wonderful moment when all of the apostles have been out doing things and they come home telling Jesus, we did this, we taught that, we meant these people, we all the things and they're just buzzing with things. And Jesus says to them, you need a rest. Let's go away to a quiet place. I wonder what Jesus, what, what Jesus was doing. Was he simply saying, you're worn out, you have to go and have a rest or was there something more to it? I think there was much more to it than you need to go and have a sleep, like you need to have a weekend. Because he, I, he recognised in them that after having done these things, they were so full of things that the really important things were impossible. They were so full of things that they had to go and empty themselves. Why? Because when we are full of many things, we very quickly lose sight of beauty. We lose sight of the, our own inner beauty and we lose sight of the beauty of others because we're so packed with things, a bit like the kitchen I'm going to have. It will be packed with places for me to put soy sauce, oyster sauce, I need to put things on the floor, spices, there'll be a place to put things. You know, I, I've got a pla I have places to put pots in that rather than have them on a shelf somewhere else. But that's not the way the human person is made up. The model of who I am and who you are is a great cathedral. And it's the emptiness of the building which makes the cathedral beautiful. It's your inner emptiness which makes you beautiful. And it's the first thing that Jesus has us to, has us to ponder. What have you filled yourself with? If we cannot empty ourselves of the things that we presume should be there, we'll never know. We won't be able to sit down one day and say, isn't life beautiful? Imagine Notre Dame Cathedral full of shelving and cupboards and everything, every, every nook and cranny of the cathedral filled with something so that we wouldn't waste the space. It would be a horrible building. We need to have within ourselves a space. A space for ourselves, which is not filled with something which is useful. And that's what Jesus asks us to do today. Go away and make an empty space. The reason for that is not simply the beauty but the reason for that is that only the person who has a place within themselves free of things with emptiness is in fact a person of freedom. Because otherwise your life is determined by what you have filled your life with. And that has often not been a matter of choice. The emptiness that gospel today is inviting us to do is an emptiness which gives you the freedom. It gives you the space to be the person you're supposed to be. And it gives you for the first time perhaps the freedom to decide what you want to put into your inner space. Because half of the problems, so many of the mental health issues are, we are 
contume with what's already within us and our lives are not our own, we don't have freedom. So today, go home, make space, take quiet time and empty yourself. Do not be afraid of emptiness. To enter into that quiet place and to recognise your own beauty and your own worth. And then from there have the freedom to let into that empty space, that precious part of your inner life, the things that God wants to give you so as to build you up into the person, the beautiful person you are indeed made to be. And let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Christ is the Supreme High Priest interceding for us. He understands our weakness and he will intercede on our behalf. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the pastor and teacher of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they will take the decisive steps needed to deal with the climate crisis and protect the earth, our common home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For public health workers engaging with culturally diverse communities, that they will help them respond effectively to the COVID challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For gratitude to our Eucharistic Lord, who gives up his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially Anne Matthias, Felix Oriola, Bernadette Cooper, Robert Harding, June Martin, Judy Houlihan, Valerie Stockdale, Barbara Meston, and Belisario Montagudo. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for the several million who've died of COVID-19, for the rapid recovery of those who've contracted the virus, for the strengthening of those who fight the virus, and for ourselves, we will have God's protection, and do all we can do to minimise the transmission of the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Place our trust in you. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your servants, O God, of all compassion, and bestow on them the grace of your light, that they may have a true understanding of what is right in your eyes and boldly carry it out through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, his spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is, it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take, you take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, the world have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take, take away the away sins of the world, world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O merciful God, that the holy gifts we have received may confirm your servants in the truth and prompt them to seek the honour of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord grant you and all who watch this Mass his protection in this time of pandemic. May he protect you, those you love, and those for whom you pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Father.
Committed to promoting the dignity and human rights of all, especially women and children, the Good Shepherd Sisters work tirelessly to support those in need in many countries around the world. Sadly, many families in Thailand's capital survive day to day on little income, trapped in a cycle of poverty with little hope for their future. The impact of COVID-19 has made their desperate situation even more difficult. Simone and her five-year-old son Kusa are just one of many families that the Good Shepherd Sisters are supporting through the kindergarten centre. With limited skills to find employment, Simone struggles to provide for herself and her son. I started working when I was in my early years in primary school. I continued working to support myself. I want him to finish school. Even if he can finish his middle school, that's fine with me. Understanding the difference that an education will make for Kusa, Simone desperately wants him to access this opportunity that she missed out on. The kindergarten allows Simone to go to work to provide for herself and her son, knowing that Kusa will be cared for in a safe environment and given learning opportunities that would otherwise be unaffordable and out of reach. For children aged three to five years old, the school provides quality education with low fees, ensuring that each child is treated equally and with respect through the provision of school supplies, uniforms and nutritious meals and snacks to help the students make the most out of their day. In addition to learning in the classroom, children are given ample play and socialisation time and participate in physical activities prayer and meditation. We try to support them and also it's not only for education, mind and heart, you know, and my body and also has to go together that to uh, for the children to develop. If not for the kindergarten, Simone knows that Kusa's future would be limited. I want him to be able to support himself in the future. Yet, without your help, Sister Chalad simply cannot continue to provide opportunities and care for children in need like Kusa. Inspired by Acts 4.20, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard, Pope Francis invites each of us to respond to what we have seen and heard and calls each and every one of us to be actively engaged in God's mission. Your action to respond today with a generous gift can help provide nutritious meals, school uniforms and supplies for the children so that they all have equal opportunity and can get the most out of their education. You may also choose to become a mission partner, supporting work like the kindergarten and a variety of church-run programs in Thailand and around the world with a monthly gift. Please give generously today so more children like Kusa can access quality care and education for a brighter future. I believe that if we help them uh, uh, really and truly and with love, they can grow nicely and they will be, have a good future.